Story here. I'm here today to do another weekend reading vlog for you guys. I'm starting this reading vlog a day early, so I'm going to do it Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I normally do it Saturday and Sunday, but I finished my fantasy book a little bit early. Um, so this is, so today on the day that I'm starting this, it is June 11th. For those that don't know, I do live in New York. I live on Long Island. We're still dealing with all the heavy restrictions for the coronavirus pandemic. Not much is open. Can't really go anywhere. Um, so I'm going to focus this week on reading some later contemporary reads, but I do have quite a few that are a little bit more diverse. Um, and I do plan on next week tackling some nonfiction books that are connected to the Black Lives Matter movement, which is something that I have really been noticing about my reading habits lately. And it's something that I really do want to change. I want to try to le read a little bit more diversely. And it's something that I'm going to make a conceited effort for going forward. Um, we're also in the middle. We're going into an election year. Well, we, well, we are in an election year. And I do want to kind of read a bit more nonfiction to kind of expand my worldview a little bit. Right now, I am listening to the Becoming um, audiobook by Michelle Obama. And I'm also reading Crest by Marissa Meyer, which are my two audiobooks that I'm going back and forth being. And I also am listening to Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. With MuggleCast, um, it has been a reading vlog, a reading, a reread that I've been doing, and I have really, really mixed thoughts right now about continuing to read it, but I do really, really like that podcast, and as I said in my previous reading vlog, but if you guys have not been following, I don't support JK Rowling, I don't support her comments, um, and it's hard for me to sometimes look at Harry Potter and separate it from the author, but I'm really trying hard to because I love that book series, but I really just have a hard time supporting the creator right now. So I'm going to be very folk careful about what I actually buy from her in the future. And every single time I do buy something, this is an idea that I got from a close friend of mine that I'm going to make a donation to the Trevor Project. Um, so yeah, that's just kind of a big update. Um, but I am going to focus this weekend on reading some contemporary novels that I call concept novels. Um, so yeah, so the first book I decided to pick up is Say Yes Summer by Lindsay Roth Tully. This is a book that I wound up picking up at ALA and it's also super short. I love concept novels and by concept novel I mean a book that has like a fun concept. So this one is about a girl named Rachel. She decides that she's going to, she's normally a very, very straight laced student. She always plays everything by the book. Um, but she decides that she's going to have a summer where she says yes to everything that crosses her path. Um, and I literally just started it, but she seems like she's a very, very straight laced character and that kind of makes her a little bit nervous. It's not that long, but I do hope to tackle it. Um, I also am watching the Becoming documentary about, about Michelle Obama, which I'm really, really liking. Um, so yeah, that was kind of a weird start to a reading vlog, but I hope you guys are all in, all staying safe and being well. I did read about 10 pages in Say Yes Summer, but I'm going to, I'll read a little bit more and I'll update you guys. Right now she just gave the, um, I read like the first 10 pages, she just gave her, um, commencement dress at college, which is so sad, bittersweet, because my kids would, would have been graduating this week too, and they can't because of all this pandemic stuff. But I will talk to you guys in a little bit for another update. Bye, guys. Here, just checking back in. It is 8.30. I did wind up reading about 50 pages or 41 pages in Say Yes Summer. I really am liking this book. It's definitely a fun contemporary. There is a book involved that motivates her to kind of get out of her comfort zones. It reminds me of the Strongsville Rhymes book, A Year of Saying Yes, which is actually one that I definitely do want to listen to this summer as an audiobook because she actually reads it. Um... But it's fun. I mean, she is basically, it's like the day after high school's over, she has one friend who wound up going away, so she's kind of by herself, and she's kind of in a situation where she doesn't really have a lot of friends because she's so focused on her goals. That's something I can really relate to, because when I'm motivated, I can be like a little bit tunnel vision, and that's definitely how Rachel is. Um, but she has some potential entanglements that are going to be interesting. I love that it's set on like a beach town. I like that it's a summer read book. We're right, we're, we're right at the cusp of summer. Um, so yeah, I wound up reading about 50 pages. I am going to put it down. I'm going to go finish watching the Becoming Michelle Obama documentary, which I'm really, really liking. And I will update you guys tomorrow with my reading update. Bye guys. We're just checking back in. It is almost nine o'clock. I'm about to go to well, start teaching. But I did want to finishing a story in Hungry Hearts, which was, let's see, where's 
is Moments to Research Return by Aldi Asad. I've actually read stories by him before and I actually really liked it. I thought it was very interesting. It was about a about a young man who winds up going to this little community of restaurants which all these stories are set in but he's very obsessed with dying and he has a fear and he thinks that going to this restaurant might eliminate it eliminate it eliminate his fear um i found it really really cute i thought it was a very very quick story and the next one is the slender one by caroline tongue richmond and i think i'm gonna read that one as well um because i do want to read two stories um every time I read something or every time I read something else I'm gonna read, I think I'm gonna read another story and then I'll check in with you guys about my thoughts um but yeah I don't know I might read three stories we will see depending on my mood because I would like to finish this anthology in this month but I also do want to do some more reading on say yes summer so those are my plans I'll update you guys when I can talk to you guys in a bit bye okay, I'm back outside because it's actually a pretty day out um, but I did wind up reading one more story in the Hungry Hearts anthology, and it was called The Slender One. I think this is probably one of my favorites. It basically followed this character. His family is very involved in, like, this community. They own, like, a store, but their secret is that they can see ghosts, and his grandmother is in very loud in letting the ghosts, like, pass on. And there's a festival in this book, and then there's something that happens with a ghost that kind of turns his world on his head. I think this is probably one of my favorite stories since um, I really I, I really like Rain and I really liked Kings and Queens and Sugar and Spite. Like I really, I mean, no, The Great Isha Adventure. Really, really fun read. So I think I'm going to read a little bit more of my other book and then I might actually read another, a couple more stories today. But I'm going to go get my other book and I will check in with you guys when I read about 50 pages of that. Hi guys, Sorry here, just checking back in. It's almost 5.30. Um, I did wind up actually finishing Say Yes Summer by Lindsay Roth Cully. Um, this was a super short read. I liked it. I didn't love it. I did like the concept. I thought that like her kind of saying yes to everything over the summer was kind of fun and kind of a unique premise. I thought it was super short. I didn't feel super connected to the characters. There was one plot point that I think happens a lot to teenagers but I didn't love it and I don't like that it was kind of like I wouldn't say it was like supported but I think it was a big a big part of the book so I think I struggled with that a little bit nothing bad like but um I just I struggle with that a little bit but I did like the elements of like a job I did like her kind of pushing herself outside her comfort zone I did like that there was flashback friendships and romances I thought that was a very very fun read just not my favorite um, but yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, like, update my pictures on Instagram, and I might, like, work out or do something, and then I'm going to start reading, um, More Than Just a Pretty Face by Sieta M. Mad Madoon. Um, I think I'm saying that wrong, but this is written by a ma by a male, um, and it's, he, um, it says, for fans of Becky Abertali and Jenny Han, a sweetly fun, funny YA rom-com dedicated to falling in love, family, familiar expectations, and becoming a renaissance man. Um, and I think this has to do with, like, a school club, but it is very diverse. This author is from, grew up in Pakistan, and he, um, let's, I, you know, I know that it has to do with a lot of family obligations, but also romance, and I have been trying to read more diversely and I've been trying to find some, like, fun contemporaries, but also one that have a little bit more diversity in them. So I decided to pick this one up. And I do actually have a bunch of students that um, I hear them talk in, in Urdu all the time. So I would like to learn a little, little bit more about their culture. And I am in the mood for a romance. So I'm going to pick this book up. Sorry here, just checking back in. I do want to say that I did want to finishing Say Yes Summer by Lindsay Roth Kelly. I did get this at ALA, um, and I wound up liking it. I didn't wind up loving it. First of all, it, it it is a very very short read. My arc is only like two hundred and fifty pages, so I re like I I I overall liked it, but I wish it was like I felt a little bit more connected to the characters. I really did like the self discovery elements. I love the job. I love that it had flash flashback friendships and flashback romances like flash from the past but there was one element in this book um that I struggled a little bit with um nothing like trigger warning warner warning 
but more just like a concept that I always struggle with it. Um, I know a lot of people had the similar problem in Lola and the Boy Next Door, but I felt that this book just wasn't as captivating as that with that plot point element. Um, but I did like the job. I did like, you know, she kind of had to explore herself over the summer. Um, and yeah, I like that it pushed her out of her comfort zone. I liked it. I didn't love it, but I would definitely read more by this author in the future. Um, and if you don't want me to tell you what the plot point is, just DM me or ask me somewhere and I'll tell you because it's not that serious, but it does kind of spoil the ending of the book a little bit. So the next book I am going to pick up is More Than Just a Pretty Face by Sed E. Madoon. Um, and this is from Little Brown. Ooh, it actually doesn't come out until August. So I'm actually reading it a little bit early. And with COVID-19, so many books have been getting pushed. Um, so I don't know if it's actually coming out in August, but that's when it says. But it says, for fans of Becky Abertali and Jenny Han, a sweetly funny YA rom-com de debut about falling in love, family, and expectations, and about becoming a renaissance man. Um, and I think it just, it, it, the author is a, is, is a male who grew up in Pakistan, so I think um, it's kind of dealing with that background, which I work in the DOE, so I actually have a lot of students that are from that nationality and background, and I always like to get some books that kind of give me, like, a background into their world so and it looks like that this might be told from the man the male point of view i don't think i read a lot of contemporaries solely from the guy's point of view so i'm actually excited to dive into it so i'm going to do that and when i read about 50 pages and after i work out i'll probably like give you guys a check-in but yeah that's my plans for the day and when i check in later i'll tell you guys what what are my plans for this weekend nothing too exciting but you guys are gonna take the journey with me bye guys Okay, so just checking back in. I did actually wind up reading two stories from the Hungry Hearts anthology. I wound up reading, um, let's see, which ones did I wind up reading? I wound up reading Give Me Some Sugar by Jay Coles, which I wound up really, really liking. Basically, it follows this young boy named Leo, and his mom is battling a very, very debilitating illness, but he has a chance to kind of get some money to help her by winning a cooking competition that is set in Hungry Hearts Row, which is where all these books are set. Which, that was probably one of my favorite stories. I really like Leo as a character. It was also a male-led story, and I like that one a lot better than the other one in this anthology. And the other story I read was the Missing Ingredient one, which I have very, very conflicting thoughts about. Like, I thought it was okay. It had, like, a very, very abrupt ending. But it was intriguing. It definitely had a more, like, mystical turn. But it was very, very short. So, like, I would want to know what else happened in that story. But it was, it was definitely interesting. Um... And that was, oh, and that was written by Rebecca Roanhorse, and she also wrote The Race Me to the Sun Middle Grade, so she's actually a, an, an author that I normally do like. I just thought the story was a little bit interesting. So I am going to dive in, and I'm going to start more than just a pretty face by set, I think it's said, and Mastoon. Um, I could be wrong about that, but I'm going to start this, and I will check in with you guys when I read about 50 or, you know, maybe like 40 or 50 pages. But yeah, I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Bye. Right here, just checking back in. Um, I did wind up reading about 30 pages in More Than Just a Pretty Face by Sid A. Masoon. I'm really liking this book. It's super funny. Um, but it basically follows this young boy named Danelle. Um, and his parents are a Muslim family. And in the Muslim tradition, is they're very into, like, arranged marriages. Um, and he has some, like, not traditional life paths. He wants to basically be a chef. Um, and his parents do not agree with that, um, and he's kind of hoping to be, or have an arranged marriage to one person, but then he meets someone else, and she has kind of a past that I don't think her parents would, his parents would be very, very approve, like, approve of, so that's kind of where I am in the book, but I do like that they really do dive into the Muslim culture. I work with a lot of Muslim kids in my school, I teach a lot of them, so I think it's very interesting to know this backdrop. But it's just really, really funny. Like, it's a very, very funny book. It's been a while since I read a contemporary book that's only in the male point of view. Um, I don't know the last one that I read, to be honest with you. But I am liking it. I, I think it's a very, very fun read. And the, the quote, more than just a pretty face, is that he is a very, very handsome gentleman, but he's lacks some other things. Like, he's not the top of his class. But there's also, like a school-wide academic championship that's also involved in this book and I'm curious if he's going to be up for that 
But I do like the characters' dynamics between each other. I think it's very, very fun. But I, I really like that we're learning a lot about the Muslim culture. In this book, I think that it's one read that I would recommend because um, it's just one that kind of takes a culture that you're not that familiar with and kind of expands on it. What I'm really, really liking is it's also very, very funny. But there also is some language moments. I'll say that. there. You know, there is talk about sex there is talks about like a sex tape so just kind of know that going in but and there's there, there also is language they're seniors in high school so there is some cursing but it doesn't bother me in my reads but sometimes it does for other people so just as a note but i'm gonna go read another like 30 to 40 pages and then i'll give you guys another update thanks we're here and back it is sunday or saturday sorry sorry may june 13th um, I did wind up reading a little bit more last night, so to get up to page 100 in more than just a pretty face, I'm really liking this book. I think that it's such a fun take on a culture that, like, I am not that familiar with, and I think that's why I, like, love reading, and I think especially everything that's going on in the world right now, I think it's really important that you kind of read about stuff that you're not familiar with. Um, this book does follow, it does, it does take place in the Muslim culture. Um, and it does follow, like, a typical world of that. But you follow these two characters, Danelle, who is kind of not your most pop... He's, like, not your most well-to-do character. Like, he's not super smart. But he is a very, very... He, he says a lot. He's more than just a pretty face. He has some goals. He wants to be a chef. But his family does not think that that's a viable career path for him. And his parents are very into arranged marriage. Um, but his dad is, like, very, very hard on him and doesn't think his son's going to amount to much. But when he crosses paths with a young girl who is in more complicated shapes than he is, she dealt with a lot of, um, she had sex before marriage and it was videotaped, which is a no-no in the Muslim culture, in any culture, really. But it's really putting her in kind of a precarious situation because no one wants to take a chance on her. And she's kind of, he's kind of dealing with the aftermath of that he doesn't think that matters but he likes someone else. So it's kind of like a given a love and hate relationship between everyone in the situation. But I really like it. There's also a lot of um, love-hate relationship with him. But it's a, it, it's a complicated situation. Um, but you also follow a bunch of different Muslim men. You follow D D Dainal, who appreciates his heritage. And then you follow his two best friends. And they're kind of dealing with um, a straining in their relationship because they're really not the same type of people anymore. But I'm really, really liking it. There is, like, some really, really hard family moments in this between the dads on both sides, both Wisdom's dad and, and um, Danelle's dad. But I'm really, really liking it. It's a very, it's a very, 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 very funny. Like, super funny. And I like that about it because it's really, really making me laugh. But then it's also having me think about what these characters are going through. So, today is my filming day. I have to film a bunch of videos. Um, I didn't really watch any TV shows last night. I just caught up on the YouTube videos. I didn't normally do that on Friday night. I kind of, like, watch all that stuff. Um, but I am in the middle of a bunch of stuff. So, um, I probably am going to um, watch a bunch of stuff this weekend. But, I'm going to go start filming. And then I'll update you guys after yoga is over. Bye, guys. It's Lori here. I'm here to do another favorites video so it is right now it is june 13th so it's actually a little bit longer than a month than i last updated you guys but i did want to update you guys on what i wound up watching in this month and i also wanted to re recap all the shows hopefully that i wound up following this year because there have been quite a bit and i just wanted to go over them at the top um and just say like my overall thoughts um but the shows that i wound up watching like pretty much on the regular this year was the good doctor which i finished and i talked about that in a previous video Good Harmony, which was a choir-themed show on NBC that followed, like, Anna Camp and um, a couple of other actors. I wound up actually really liking that show. Like, it was just, it was a, it was, like, a nice, it reminded me a lot of, like, the first season of, like, Glee. And I just found, I just like Anna Camp. I think she's hysterical. I don't know if that got renewed. I'm gonna have to look that up. But that was, like, I think it ended right around Christmas, I think. So I don't know if it got, like, a second a second half I don't know if that's good or bad for it but that was a show that I wound up really really enjoying and I actually didn't talk about that in my last um wrap up because I had finished watching it earlier um I also finished watching Bull Type and Good Trouble which I did talk about um Bull Type is actually coming back this week um they are gonna have a shorter season though due to the COVID-19 stuff but I'm actually really excited because I was I was equally excited about that Good Trouble I also didn't I I, I also did finish watching 
Um, but they are ha- they did not were not able to start filming before COVID, so they're gonna be a slightly delayed season. Um, and then I also finished watching This Is Us, which I talked about heavily in my last video. Um, Batwoman, which I'm very upset. I mean, I like the show a lot. I know that I love the actress who played Batwoman, Ruby Ru- Ruby Rose. She's actually leaving for some reason, and I'm sure it's not good the reason she's leaving but um so they're actually like not recasting her but they're bringing in a new character to play her I'm not sure how I feel about that but I do really enjoy the show and I liked I just like the character dynamics a lot so I was a little bit disappointed to hear that she was leaving because I really did like that show I will definitely try watching next season and see how I feel um but I do like the side characters so maybe that will be enough to like capture me or maybe I'll like the new Batwoman even better but I really did like Ruby Rose and that was like a little bit sad um I also did catch up on Flash and Supergirl which I have completed I am unsure if those shows ended the way that they were supposed to or if we were supposed to have more episodes because they both ended at like a really really odd cliffhanger and I don't know if that was like there was supposed to be another episode and then all the COVID stuff happened so but some drama happened with The Flash that I'm actually really upset about. One of the actors got called out for, like, some derogatory statements that he made, like, so many years ago. And he won't be coming back next season. Um, so, you know, this world we're living is crazy. And I support the Black Lives Matter movement. I do. I'm just a little bit upset that he had to make those choices so many years ago. Because I thought that he was a good actor. But, you know... I like, I like that everyone's being held accountable for their actions and I'm making a conscious effort to really like not support people that don't support that movement. So I know it's an important step. It's just, you know, I wish, I wish he had made some better choices. Um, and then I also finished watching Katie Keene with Lucy Howe, which I wound up really enjoying. I thought I finished watching that like last week, I think. And again, I really hope that it comes back for a second season. And I finished watching Nancy Drew finally. And I don't know if that, again, was a show that was supposed to end that way. But I really hope that we get a second season because it's one that I really, really would like. Um. Okay, so the movies I have watched. I actually watched two movies well, two movie things. I watched Phantom Menace, which is episode one in the Star Wars world. Um, I also think I watched, um, yeah, I definitely did watch Phantom Menace. And I know that there's a lot of controversy about Phantom Menace, but I still really, really like that movie. Um, I really, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch Clone Wars or the um, the second one, episode two, so I can actually watch the animated show on Disney Plus that everyone is raving about. I'm getting there. Um, but I'm watching one animated show right now and I was trying to take a break and not watch two, but who knows? Maybe when school's over, maybe I'll have a lot more time. We will see. Um, and I also just watched Becoming, the Michelle Obama documentary on Netflix. I'm actually in the middle of reading her audiobook, but I just love her as a person. I think she's great and I love seeing the roundup of her book tour. I was unable to go to her book tour when it happened. I think it happened like a year and a half ago and I couldn't wind up making it. I think the tour stop was like sold out when I tried. Um, but I like seeing a wrap up and I like seeing her life story and I'm actually really enjoying the book. I'll probably wind up reading it by the end of next month. So you'll just see a wrap up whenever I finish reading that. But that was on Netflix. I also watched, I also watched a documentary called And Now They See Us, um, which was the behind the scene making of the show and now they see us which is about the central park five which is about the five young black men who were falsely accused and put into prison for the rape of a white woman that they didn't actually commit those stories make me so angry they make me so incredibly angry and you actually got to see the men that this actually happened to as well as the actors portraying them and it just was heartbreaking and um yeah i'm i said this I said this in a video you guys will see eventually i'm really trying to diversify my reading life and my watching life so um yeah so that that's something that I has been in the forethought of my mind when I've been picking things to watch um but yeah so those are the movies I found up I finished watching I have a couple of movies I do have to watch um but I've had a lot of tv shows to finish so I'm hopeful that once my tv shows are done I can have a little bit more time to focus on some movies I have still been playing animal crossing game wise it's so bizarre because I am not a video game player, but I really do like this game. I try to play it every single day. I don't always do that on the weekends. 
Um, but I am really, really liking it. I'm much slower. I think I'm so far behind everyone that I know that's playing, but it's okay. I, I just like it, and I put on my true crime videos in the background, and I kind of play it, and it's fun. Um, so here's the shows that I binge-watched, um, and I completed, or I finished. Um, I actually did finally wind up re-watching Adrian Carter, and I wound up finishing season two with the rewatchable podcast. Um, which I wound up loving. I love their point of views, like, thoroughly. I think that they are, like, so fun to watch a show with. And they actually did this last year, so I actually had to catch up. Um, but I wound up really liking it. I love Agent Carter and Jarvis. Like, just love them. Their dynamics are so much fun, and I really, really wound up loving my rewatch of that show. It's been a while since I've seen it, and it actually motivated me to pick up um, Agent Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. again, so... That I'm going to add to my summer TBR of shows to catch up on. I'm actually going to do a video for you guys, I think, um, once school's over, which is coming up soon. So that you guys will be seeing soon as well. But I wound up really liking that experience and was happy that I finished watching it. And was happy that it was on Disney Plus because I would have had to buy the episodes because it vanished from everything else. <laughs> um, this show, the next one I'm going to talk about was one that I was not expecting to enjoy so much, but it was Pitch. Which styles which stars Kyle Bunbury and Mark Poor Gosler and Ali Leiter. And this was like a show that they picked on random because baseball is like non existent. And guys, this show was incredible. It was also written by Dan Fogler, which I didn't know until like halfway through the season. But I love Dan Fogler in This Is Us. And it kind of had the same feeling I had when I watched This Is Us. Like it's not an easy show to watch emotionally because you kinda get like punched in the emotions a lot but I thoroughly liked it I was so upset that I got canceled I think it was the first show in a while that I literally watched the series finale and I was like no uh -uh. you can't end you can't end a show like that like that's just mean so I was very upset about the ending I love the actors though but I was very upset about the ending and I felt like I was like you cannot end a show like that and I think the problem was they really thought they were coming back and then they didn't come back and but I will say, for 10 episodes, I thought it was so well-structured. Really, really like the actors, like, so much. So, there's definitely a show that I wound up really, really liking. I also wound up finishing both Season 1 and Season 2 of Legacies. Guys, I love that show. Like, love it. I was so upset to realize that they weren't on se they weren't going into Season 4. They're only going into Season 3. So I actually binge watch everything and I loved it. Oh my god, I love the ending so much. I am so craving more episodes that I like need them like right now in my life. Um, but I thoroughly like it. I think I might watch originals first over the summer and see if I can actually watch that. I don't know if I'm gonna watch Vampire Diaries, but I do definitely want to watch originals. And hopefully in the fall we will have some new TV shows to watch. If not, I'll be catching up on a lot more shows on Netflix. <laughs> um, and then I also wound up finish watching The Mandalorian, um, which I was only like two episodes behind on, but I did finish watching that. And I then started watching the behind the scene documentary show, which I, I'm really, really loving. There's actually a lot of documentaries on Disney Plus that I do want to start watching. So that might be a summer thing as well. Um, but... Yeah, I wound up really, really liking that. I also didn't realize that Bryce Dallas Howard wrote one, that the guy that plays, like, John Favreau was in, like, Iron Man. I did not know that. That was shocking to me. I was like, what do you mean? That's John Favreau? That was kind of cool. So the behind the scenes documentary, I would actually really recommend if you checked out The Mandalorian. And I got myself a baby Mandalorian because it was a present to myself because all my trips got canceled, so bought myself that and I can't go to Star Wars World right now so bought myself the Mandalorian um yeah so those are all the shows that I binge watch in this time of quarantine um but yeah and I will definitely be giving do, do, doing one for the month of June as well so stay tuned for that and there's a bunch of shows that I did wind up starting in this time period i started watching star girl there's like three episodes out and i really do like that show it reminds me more of like it's 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 a very different type of dc show it's more like um a, like a younger character and i don't think you've ever seen a character that young in the dc universe so i'm really liking that i'm liking that character dynamic and i love owen like 
I just love these. The the male like her her stepfather. I think he's great. Um, I did start watching the end part of Fuller House, which I have a couple more episodes for, and I'm actually probably gonna binge watch that this weekend because I do want to catch up. I have a couple of co comedies that just came out, like Alexa and Katie. Um, good luck, Nick. A couple of comedies came out that I do want to catch up on, but I do want to finish Fuller House first. This was one that I've been putting off for so long, um, but I've heard so many good things about the Avatar series, and I am, it was a show that Rewatchable had covered, so I didn't want to picking it up, and boy, am I really impressed by it. Like, I, I didn't think I would like an animated show like that, but I am really impressed. So I'm about 11 episodes in. I'm going to, I'm, I'm in the middle of trying to catch up on another podcast that I'm listening to, but I do want to definitely try to finish watching Avatar in the month of, if not June, and July. So, but I'm really, really liking it. I did buy Legend of Korra on DVD, so I am in it for the long haul, and I love Aang. I love Sokka. Katana I have issues with, but I love Aang, so I will watch anything that Aang's in right now. Um, I also did start watching Sweet, Sweet Magnolias from Netflix, and I'm about, like, five episodes in that stars um the girl that played ariel in um little mermaid and also she was in reba cheyenne that actress joanna lynn swisher she was actually she was also actually in pitch she played mark paul gosler's ex-wife so wonder really really liking that show i love shows that take place in like a small town um i've always liked that so that's a show and it's it, and it also is based on a book series, which if I like the show, I might actually wind up checking out the book series as well. But it basically follows these three women who live in this small town, and they're all kind of in, like, a different stage in their life. And it's just really, really fun. So hopefully I'll be able to finish that soon. Um, I am still in the middle of watching One Calls the Heart. I did put that show down for a moment, and Letters to the King I'm still watching, but I have put it down. So yeah, those are kind of all the things that I have been occupying my time as well as a lot of walks and a lot of yoga and hoping, beyond hope, that things will start opening. Um, but we still, I think we just entered phase two, which means we're, it's slow going, we're getting there. Um, I also did have to cancel my trip to Universal in in July, which I was so upset about, but I realized it was probably the best bet because I did want to go and enjoy my trip. So I'm hopefully going to be able to reschedule it for the month of um, February because I have a big break and I can probably go sneak away and hopefully the world will be in a better space, I hope. Um, and I also had to cancel, well, BEA got canceled, but we did have a virtual book con experience, which I do talk about in one of my reading vlogs. So that was fun. And I am going to virtual ALA in about two weeks just for something to do, honestly. And I don't think we're going to have Comic-Con this year. But I am going to the San Diego Comic-Con one that's going to happen in July um, just because it's something to do. And I've always wanted to go to that convention and I can't never make it. So I figured I would at least participate in the virtual event. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what my life's like right now. I'm definitely going to film another one of these probably in the middle of July and I'll let you guys know what I have been catching up on. But yeah, let me know what you guys have been, been binge watching or binge TVing or whatever you guys have been doing and share in the comments what you have been really enjoying and I'll talk to you guys next month for another wrap up video. Bye guys. Right here. So it's seven o'clock. Um, today my cousin came over, and I literally haven't seen her since January, before all the COVID stuff happened. So we literally spent the whole day talking, which was so nice. So like tiring. Like I don't, I haven't been around people in so long. But it was very, very nice to see her, and we got to catch up and you know talk about a bunch of stuff. So that was super nice. Um, but yeah, um, I didn't actually read anything today. I'm still on page 121 in more than just a pretty face. Still really enjoying it though, so I think I'm gonna do it. I think I'm. I actually didn't even work out today. I did like nothing, <laughs> um, but it's okay. Everyone needs kind of a day off. But I did do yoga this morning, so I feel a little bit productive. Um, and I actually did walk more than I thought I did, so that's exciting. Um, but I definitely do want to make some more progress and more than just a pretty face. Um, but I think I'm just gonna throw in some of my background noise and kind of read for a bit before I take my shower. Um, but yeah, I'll update you guys when I get up to page, like, maybe, like, 200. My goal was to finish this book today. I don't know what's going to happen. But socializing is always fun, especially when we've been in a quarantine lifestyle. So I'm going to go read for a bit, and I'll update you guys when I read a little bit more and remind myself where I am in this book because I kind of stopped a little bit abruptly.
I was checking back in yesterday was like not my best reading day I think I read like 20 pages but I was super busy with my cousin and I haven't seen her in like four to five months so it was really really nice to catch up with her I did finish watching the series finale of Fuller House on Netflix and then I started watching Alexa and Katie it's only eight episodes but it's a but it's also their series finale so I might continue watching that today and I also watched about 20 minutes of the first episode of the originals I don't know if I'm going to keep watching that right now but we do start that show seeing Hope's mom and I know Hope from legacies and I've always wanted to see kind of her backstory so I might keep watching we will see but I didn't want to say that I made a bunch more progress and more than just a pretty face by Thayde Masoon I'm now on page 206 this book is very very interesting so basically it follows this this Muslim community you follow um Danelle and he is he's a he 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 is what the title says he's he is a very very pretty face he's a very very attractive young man and you follow he's not he's not expected to do much like his parents don't expect him to do much arranged marriages is very very popular in his society um, and he gets offered to be in a range marriage with this girl, Fusima. Um, but she has a lot, he, she has a very, very troubled past. She had, um, a sex tape go out, which is very, very not what this, what her, what her society wants. So she's kind of like the lower part of the barrel. And the girl he wants is like his best friend's sister. And she is like very out of his league. Um, but there's also another element in this book. There is a Renaissance Man competition, and he's basically chosen kind of as a joke. His teacher kind of has him be representative of his class kind of as a joke, and he has to write his paper on Winston Churchill. Um, but when his dad makes a comment about Winston Churchill and his behavior in the past, it kind of sets him off on a thing to kind of investigate, and he finds out some sign of dirty things about Winston Churchill, which even I didn't know. And I think it's very interesting to be like, you know, what else does this person do? Like, someone may be a hero, but every hero has secrets. And I think it's really interesting seeing him develop it. But he's also caught between a very, very, like a rock and a hard place. Because if he, if he presents this paper the way he wants to, he could fail his class. He could fail, like, everything. And then he also has another thing that if he fails this paper, this girl he really likes probably won't be with him and his parents her, her parents probably won't approve he's also a chef so there's a lot of talk about food which is makes me so hungry but again that's not it's that's not a chosen path that, any, that anyone really really wants for him it's a very very complicated book but I all like a very very interesting book I also like there are three young Muslim men in the story and they're all very very different you have Danelle who's I don't know I, I say he's he, he does understand his religion and he appreciates it but not to an obsessive capacity like his other friend. And his other friend is very, very deeply, deeply Muslim. And he's very, very committed to the teaching. But it almost, and he even says it in the book, it almost has like kind of like an obsessive twist to it. And then their other friend is just kind of like, I'm going to do whatever I want. I don't care like what the teachings say. So I think it's kind of interesting to see these three characters and see how they all take on them, their religious identity. I think it's so interesting. Um, but I also, I, I'm, I'm just really captivated. It's not a world that I live in, but I'm really liking it. I also really like the relationship between these two characters because they're so different. Blissima, I just love her. She's like in a library. She really, really likes superheroes and comic books. And that's not his world. And I just think that they're kind of fun. But I also think that like everyone is trying to change him. And I'm just curious to see how this book ends. Like I really don't want to put it down. I'm very, very captivated by it. Um, but I do have to take some, I'm going to go to my virtual yoga class, um, and then I'm probably going to take my Instagram photos. It's definitely a little bit chillier today, but I'm hopeful I can still squeeze in a bike rack because I didn't do any working out yesterday, and I want to, like, fix that. Um, but I will definitely come in and let you know guys when I start reading again, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. Bye. Hey, Slurry here. I'm back. Um, today was actually kind of an exciting day. I actually was able to do a lot of things that I did before COVID-19. I know we're still in the middle of it, but it just felt nice to kind of have a little bit of sense of normalcy. I did my virtual yoga class. I walked to town. I had a bagel like in town. It was just nice. Like, and then I went for a bike ride. I kind of was able, they finally opened parks in my neighborhood. Not like the pool or anything like that, but the parks are open. So it just felt kind of nice to kind of get out of the house and like wear a mask when needed, but just, it was, it was nice. I know a lot of other states are a lot more ahead of us, 
but their cases are rising. Our cases seem to be at a lower rate, but we're not as far along. So I'm just being cautious the best I can. But I did want to say that I did want to make a little bit more progress on more than just a pretty face. I'm really, really, really liking this book. Um, it really is tackling the elements of being a Muslim in a community really 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 well especially when so many different characters in this book have so many different point of views about it like the like the three boys are so different but their point of views are equally valid Blissima's point of view is really interesting because she's a girl and she's dealing with a lot of other things but I do really love the um renaissance man competition and what that Danelle is learning about Winston Churchill and how to really craft an argument and they had a lot of talk about history is written by the winners and why that is more challenging today to be the only narrative, but they really talked a lot about oppression, and I just, I especially what's going on right now in, like, our world, I just found this to be such a hard-hitting read, but it's also super funny, super relatable, I love the romance, like, the potential romance dynamics between these two characters, and then you have the girl that Danelle really likes, or feels like he likes, um, and their dynamic is just it's just very interesting, like, you know, what she wants and what he wants. Um, and I'm just, I'm really, really liking it. So I'm going to keep reading. I I really didn't read anything yesterday. But I'm going to try to make some more reading progress. And I will update you guys when I get up to page, like, 300. Right now I'm on page 250. And I'll update you guys in a little bit. Bye. Sorry, hair, just checking back in. I do want to get into page 300 and more than just a pretty face. But I say me, me must soon. I'm probably saying that. I'm so badly. I apologize. But I'm really, really liking this book. I think it's so well done. We're right into the climax, right when the Renaissance Man competition is about to begin. And I cannot wait to see what happens. I'm loving the romance in this book so much. I'm loving Danelle as a character. I'm just loving it. I think that it's one book that really tackles contemporary, like, fun and hysterical and romance tropes. But would also with a hard-hitting other element that really deals with the Muslim culture and background. But also, like, it just deals with history in general and winners and losers and how the story is told. I really love how they're deconstructing Winston Churchill as a figure in this novel. Like, I think him and what he stood for and the actions he took is something that really captured Danielle. I think the title is just so interesting and I really like how it's playing into the book. I love the character of Blissima so much. I think she's really challenging norms and I think that that's really, really fun. But I'm just really, really liking it. So I'm going to go tackle the rest of this. And then I'll come in and give you guys my thoughts. Bye. Hi, hey, Lori here. I'm actually here to wrap up this reading vlog. It's only like almost 4 o'clock. But I wanted to focus this reading vlog on reading new to me authors. Which included um, The Summer of Yes. And then More Than Just a Pretty Face. And then my next reading vlog is going to read authors that I have read before. I was really hoping to read three books this weekend. That did not happen. But that's okay. I wound up adoring this book. I thought it was so, so fun. So, so cute. Um, I will say that there is some sexual content in this book. Um, there is a lot of talk about sex tapes. There is a lot of language in this book, but I just think the diversity elements are stand out. I loved learning more about the Muslim culture, and I thought that the diversity in the Muslim culture that was featured in this read were so important. And I think the, I think the back of this is like really, really good quote. For fans of Becky Abertali and Jenny Han, a sweet, funny YA rom-com about falling in love, family expectations, and becoming a renaissance man. Jen, um, Danelle and Blissima's families have a very, very big role in this book, and they take two very, very strict point of views on their children. But I also love the element of the renaissance man competition, and I just thought it was so great. I really would recommend this highly. So, I'm going to wrap up this reading vlog. I also really did like The Summer of Yes. It wasn't my favorite. I didn't feel as connected to the characters, and I thought it was a little bit rushed. And there was one element in that book that I sometimes struggle with a little bit, but it's not anything bad, I'll say that. It just wasn't my favorite, but I did like the concept. So, I'm going to head and I'm going to start my next reading vlog, and I will talk to you guys for my next reading vlog later. Bye, guys.